Now, for the most part, I really, really enjoyed this episode, you know? Even though most of the time, it was just Hajime stalling, thinking, do we really want to save his classmates? And then the rest is just showing what his classmates are going through. And you know there's some stuff with this episode, but you already know. You already know I want to point out. But it's just like, really? Really? But first, let's talk about stuff I do like. The stuff I do like. If this show had at least 24 episodes, and it was just Hajime and his family just traveling around, just going labyrinth to labyrinth, just and meeting other villagers and forests, stuff like that, I really enjoyed it. It would really build up the characters a lot, you know? You'll, you'll be more invested. But unfortunately, we don't have that. So even if we did get a season two for this, it still won't feel really attached to all the characters. Even if you do enjoy them, you want to see them more in different situations and how they will handle them. Not just, I would follow you anywhere out of me. Like, some of them will have different opinions and will at least confront them with it. Because that's how relationships work. It's not just a one-sided, okay, I agree with you wherever you say. But whatever, you just blame on bad writing. But the beginning episode, of this episode, Made me laugh a bit. You know, those scenes where she's goofing around on the motorcycle, teasing Hajime, Hajime getting frustrated, trying to run her over, I guess. And then you have um, Tio just acting like Tio and everything. Th those moments like that, I wish we had more of in this series. They were really nice, and there's probably a lot of those moments in the books, I bet you. Which I'm going to read, like I said, when this um, season's over with. And... I want to buy them legally, but let's face it, seven seasons take forever on um, licensing this stuff. It's just, well, translating it, I mean. So I'm like, out of patience. Well, anyways, Kajime and them go to, their, to town where he originally came from when he went to his world, I'm guessing, where he went to see the labyrinth. And it brought back some painful memories. As you assigned to the Guildmaster, Endo, one of the classmates, came in and tell him, hey, um, our friends are being screwed. This is actually the first time we actually get to see a demon. Most of the times we saw humans and monsters and the beast folk, but we didn't really get a chance to see an actual demon. And the fact that just one, just one demon was causing so much trouble for everyone just proves how one-sided this war is. Just, just think about this for a second. Imagine if Hajime didn't fall into the abyss. He didn't get betrayed. They just did their mission and they went back. Imagine what would have happened. They would have been screwed. They would have been screwed. They, they want nothing be left of them. They're, they weren't the ready heroes. But then again, even the demon said herself that the former heroes that came from the world before were had more res resolve to kill their enemies because they know they're in war. They're not in this RPG game where everyone stays alive, you know. They were well aware of that, but the war is not over well because the war has been going on for centuries and on and on because the gods are just being total pricks. <laughs> now, seeing their despairful situation really had me hype in this episode because it shows how the, the, the good guys aren't always going to have come out nice and clean. Especially when I seen this part where one I thought when I thought one of the classmates died. I think her name was Suzu, the girl that was doing all the shields and protection barriers. I'm like, holy crap. They actually killed someone off. That one turned to a bad guy and Hajime had to take down like former episodes. But no, someone who was still on the good side died. That's what I thought was going to happen. Nope. You t did you just hate it when a show, story or whatever just does that where you're like, Holy crap, it adds impact. It takes your emotions like, oh no, man, this actually happened. This story's getting real. You're not safe here. No, 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 you being part of the main characters is going to save you. You're going to die. And then, right as the show goes on, at the end, oh, turns out they're okay. 
That is, that's a slap in the face. I can't stand when stories do this, when they do cop-outs like this, when you thought a character's dead, and it would make so much development that this character's dead, and they stay dead so they'll learn from this experience to become stronger people in the future, only to find out, hey, I'm okay in the end. It makes you want to take back your deep breath that you were holding in from that one moment that, that made you like, holy crap, this is serious, to a, nope, never mind, she's fine, she's fine, everyone, go, go back, no one either worrying. This is the kind of crap that I really got on fairy tale for, how it just cops out so hard, where even characters who apparently died before the series even began were somehow still alive. In the series, I just couldn't stand that. It's one of the things where fairy tale had the good stories and characters and battles. It just had a terrible execution of keeping characters alive, even though they should have died. And they keep doing that same crap over and over again. And I know I keep going to fairy tales. I need to get off because I can rant about fairy tales all day long. But this right here, I don't know why this got to me. I expect this in anime, but for some reason right here in this dark, edgy anime, you expect when you see a character die, they should stay dead to build up an experience. But no, she's alive, and the hero guy was actually he had the demon girl on the ropes, but he hesitated when he saw a magically the locket opens in front of him. <laughs> Oh my god, I, I swear, I do like um, the story of Arifureta, but you gotta admit that there's a lot of bad writing points in this series. A lot of them, like... And of course, there's also the blind racism, of course, with Endo and probably the other classmates. They were told that not to trust the Beast Folk, that they're bad creatures and stuff like that. So when Endo saw Mew, um, you know, just sitting there eating her treats on Hajime's lap, he, he dared assault the precious. And of course, Hajime went all off on his ass, like, how dare you? Who the hell are you compared to my little daughter? <laughs> He just went on her, man. He's already an overprotective papa. <laughs> That's nice. But once again, it would have been nice if we saw more development with them. That would have been nice. But we don't get to have that. <sighs> if only we went to a different studio. Whatever. I can't I can't stay on these things. Just, just let it go. Let it go. Okay. <sighs> Next. Let's talk about them CGI creatures. The CGI in this anime is so god awful. I've seen PlayStation 1 CGI better than this. No lie. I've seen MMDs, the Miku Miku Dance um, engine, with better CGI. You can literally just take the engine, put it on your computer for free, and add on tons of characters in background settings and music for free, and they can do better animation than this with them crappy CGI characters. Some monsters you will see that are 2D drawn, others are most of them are CD made. I don't know why, but it's god awful. Especially those monsters that that demon summon. Oh, what are you thinking? Oh my god, it peed me off. But now that Hajime is there, and he is pretty much is in the same area that pushed him down to the abyss, I like to see the little reaction that's going to happen. Well, anyways, um, the show just even without even if you were given a good studio to do this show, it will still fall back on some of his bad writing. I will tell you that right now, you know, there are some things in here that they could have done better. The writer themselves could have done better. I know there's more detail into the books, but getting this fresh summary of how some of the situations went down, it still feels like some of the fault lies on the writer himself for that. So there's that too. Now, the only things I really hated about this episode was, of course, the CGI. And, um, and Suzu still being alive. You saw the girl. She got hit in the gut. And then she was turning to stone. 
and then they left her there. But, but somehow she is there, still alive, barely. That stuff sets me off. Like, I'm like, Susan, you were going to make this show, and it's something else where, oh snap, none of us are safe. We can die at any time, but this is war. We don't get that. Because of you, stay alive. I know it sounds wrong, but this is a story, so it has to be right. <laughs> so anyways, I'm just, we're, we're going into the end game. I'm seeing how this is. Some people are wondering whether this is going to be on Easy Kai Quartet. Because, you know, they're coming up with a new season. And I already think Slime and Shield Hero is going to be on Easy Kai Quartet. But seeing this on Easy Kai Quartet would be pretty interesting. Now, that being said, that's all I got. I fed my frustration. This episode had its goods and bads. And the CGI and Suzu staying alive at the end really got me. <laughs> I don't know why just did so i hope you guys enjoyed this review if you did like comment subscribe of course hit the bell icon this has been macro anime sign out